Hi friends, thank you so much for joining me today for Heal Her Arts Next Stage program, Light Up the Desert. This is our candle making and painting on glass jar activity here. For today's class, we're going to be using the glass jars, the paints provided. If you have other paints at home, acrylic paint is what we're using and uh, that will mesh fine with the acrylic paint I provided. We're going to be using the paint brushes. Uh, there are two in the kit. If you have other paint brushes you would like to use, that is fine also. Don't forget, we need a cup of water to uh, clean our brushes and uh, some paper towels. To uh, use the paint, uh, paint pots successfully, I like to cut them up because opening them all together can lead to a mess. So I just cut them up that I can use them. And I also will take them out of the, the paint pots, it's personal preference, and put them on a palette. And that palette, you know, could be a paper plate or um, palette paper, whatever you may have. So those are the materials that we're using today. I will go over the other materials that, we, that is in the kit and that we'll be using next time. And I will also discuss the additional materials that you will need to provide in order to be successful to make the candles at the next class. All right, so the two jars that we have, I'm gonna actually change my, my screen so that you can see uh, everything that I am working with right in front of me up close and personal. Okay. So here I am at my workstation. Now, I actually painted the design on um, some mat board here, but I only did that because some, sometimes it's a little hard to see the actual design when it is around the surface of the jar. So I only painted the background so that I can paint that fine detail with you, not only on the jar, but also on a flat surface. So we're going to get started with the, uh, let's see, this is the uh, Twinkly Stars uh, jar. It does, you're, you can choose the small or the, the uh, taller jar. Both of them hold the same amount of candle wax. So if you were thinking, well, I'm going to make the bigger candle, whatever painting, it, they're, they are both the same volume, believe it or not. So, oh. Thank you for letting me know. Heal Her Art logo is showing big. Thank you for letting me know. Let's see. Make sure. Make this big. Okay, so uh, give me a thumbs up, Shelly, you're there. Can you see this is big? All right, perfect, thank you, ma'am. All right, so I'm gonna start with the stars in the sky painting first because it does have a little bit more layers and believe it or not, painting on glass, if you're not familiar with this, does take a little bit longer to, to set up. Um, one thing to be successful with painting on glass is light brush strokes. Also, let each layer dry in between. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to paint on the um, on the larger glass because I found that getting the, the star design is a little bit more challenging on the shorter on the shorter glass. You have you have less canvas to work with per se. And so that means that my stars would really take up the whole portion of the glass. So I'm going to use the taller glass for this painting. If you prefer to use the shorter one, that's fine. Just know that your uh, star design will take up most of the glass. Okay, so the colors that we're going to be using for this painting is white, yellow, red, blue, black, and I think if I have a green in there, you can use green. If not, we can make a green. So 
that is the the colors we're going to be using and if you have some additional colors that you would like to use that is fine as well now some people may say you know what Dana, i'm feeling a little overwhelmed and i'd rather not paint with you i'd rather paint after i see what's going on that's fine because uh we are recording the session and it will be available to view later on um, with a link to a youtube channel okay so friends, I have two brushes that we're gonna be using for today. It is a large flat and then a fine detail brush. We're gonna be using, well, it's not really large, <laughs> large as far as uh, out of the two. We're gonna be using that flat brush for the majority of the painting and only that fine detail brush, of course, for the fine detail. We are gonna be painting the whole jar, but just know that when the lid goes on, it, you will lose some of your design. So keep that in mind that depending on how you choose to use this jar, because you may decide that you wanna put your candle in a different jar um, after painting this and say, oh, I don't wanna do that. I already have something else in mind for this. Just know that when you put your lid on, you, you are gonna lose a little bit of your design. Okay, so we're gonna start off with, I like to put my hand in the jar so that I can easily rotate the jar it is personal preference. I, if you sat the jar down and rotated on the, the surface, you are going to lift up some of your paint. So you can also tilt the jar. And so it would only be uh, just the bottom portion would be rotating. So those are your two options there. Again, I'm gonna stick my hand in the jar. Turn my light on a little closer. Okay, so this is really easy this background it, we're going to do bands of color around the bands of color start off with white then we uh, work our way up the jar to yellow red we and we blend some of these layers as we go up blue and black that's our first start now it's going to be translucent no need to worry because we're going to be painting more layers on after this. So I'm going to start off with some white, even though the base is black, but I want to get some blending going on with my jar here. So I'm just going to rotate and get a band of white across the bottom. And after you learn how to paint this, you can paint this on any glass surface, whether it is a jar uh, I would not paint the bottom. There's no need to do that. Um, but jar, a vase, uh, a glass or a goblet. Um, and since it, it is baked on, as long as you're uh, not painting at the very top, it is food and beverage safe. So I've, I'm not going to clean my brush. I've got one coat of white paint and it is very streaky. It's, it's not 100% full coverage and it is streaky. So I'm gonna go ahead now and pick up some yellow and I'm gonna blend that right over top of that white. But remember I was saying, you really want to be very gentle with your brush strokes. And that is because it lifts up the paint from underneath. So I increased that band up. I'm saying I'm about almost an inch into the glass here. And now I'm going to continue this yellow up to about two inches. So just thin. Got some relaxing music on the background, so hopefully it doesn't sound all garbled or maybe you can't hear it at all. But I don't do well in total silence. I grew up in a household that had music on all the time. So once you get that thin coat on, just, just let that set. Uh, we're gonna be adding red next. So I'll just give it another moment to let you get that uh, two inches of yellow in place. And then, uh, then we're gonna continue on with the red.
Miss Barbara, I'm so glad you're here with us today. I am going to um, quickly go over the steps that we have gone uh, gone through so far. We are only right today painting on our jars. So go ahead and pull out your paints. Uh, make sure you have a cup of water to help clean your brushes, your brushes, of course, um, and your two jars. Right now we're painting the stars in the sky glass and you did not miss very much. We have painted um, a thin band of white with the thicker brush. And then we painted a thin band of yellow about two inches up. And now we're gonna paint about an inch band of red. And I'm, I still have um, the yellow on my brush. I'm gonna overlap the yellow just a little bit. The red is really intense. You can uh, hold the glass either by the top portion or I like to stick my hand in it. And then I can kind of kind of wiggle my fingers a little bit and I can rotate. So I'm overlapping, mm, I would say about a quarter of an inch with the red. I'm not too concerned at this point for the blending. I just need to get some paint on there so that when I do put the next layer on, it will grab and then I can blend on top of that. So there is my inch, oh, it's probably an inch and a quarter or so of red. And at this point, you probably can see why I was saying to really just be very light and gentle with your brush strokes. Because if it's not dry, or even if it is dry, uh, too much uh, pressure with the brush can lift that paint up. Now it will be fine. Once you let it dry, go ahead and you can put another coat over top. But we're, we're taking our time here. There's no need to rush. I just wanted to uh get people up to speed if some people paint a little bit faster than others uh right now we have about half an inch or quarter of an inch to a half an inch of white at the base of the jar then we have about an inch or about two inches of yellow and that does overlap the white from the base and then on top of part of the yellow about a quarter of an inch over top of that yellow we have a, a one inch or or so band of red. And this goes all the way around the whole jar here. And honestly, we're not gonna see hardly any of this paint. So you don't need to worry uh, about trying to blend it to read as an orange quite yet. We just need to get some paint on there uh, and let that set up. If you have something in mind that's a little different, perhaps you want to uh, do more of a gradual or you have a multi multiple color uh, transition instead of this few color transition, I would go ahead and start adding that now. Uh, the next colors we're adding in are blue and then black. Uh, but like I said, honestly, we're not gonna see any of this because we're gonna paint a whole nother layer over top all of this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to grab some blue here. Um, if you wanted to set your glass down, maybe you have to go to the restroom or you want to take a drink or clean your, change out your water, you can set, it doesn't matter, it's at the top or bottom of the glass, it doesn't matter which way you set it. Okay. So I'm going to go over top of the red uh, about a quarter of an inch with some blue. I have, still have not washed my brush at all. And at this point you should be, uh, the blue should go right to that ridge of the, uh, the jelly jar here where the lid would close at. So just that, that little uh, ridge there, that's how far up you'd want to take your blue.
I'll give you a, a couple minutes on this. If you uh, enjoy painting and you are looking for something festive to do, just this past Saturday, I had a Facebook Live painting activity where we painted um, a really cute Easter painting. It had some eggs, the word Easter, and that is uh, recorded and saved for you to view at your leisure on the Heal Her Art Facebook page under the events. When you click on the past event, you can scroll to the Easter. In discussion, there is the link to the video, or you can actually just scroll down through the page. And I think my smiley face is right there with uh, the start of that activity. All right, friends, so I have, my painting is still very wet, but I do have about a half an inch at the very top that I need to paint black. I'm not gonna clean my brush. I'm just gonna pick up some black and paint that right across that top half inch. And you will be able to see through the, the paint uh, if you have not noticed already, we are going to be adding a couple layers to this. So don't feel like you need to put that paint on real thick. We want to let each layer dry in between. Once you're done with that, I'm going to give you, give you a couple minutes. I'm going to check with everyone to make sure that we're all at the same page. I want to, I don't want to proceed forward with anything until everyone is at this point because we're going to let this set a bit and we're gonna move on to the next jar. So I'm gonna turn my jar um, right side up there and let that cure and clean my brush off. Another, another um, minute and a half or so. And if you need more time, you can um, message me, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I get a thumbs up from everybody or at least some sort of notification in just a moment here. I'm not leaving anybody behind. Ms. Jennifer, thank you. All right, Ms. Shelley, got you there. Ms. Tina, you doing okay over there? Give me a thumbs up. Oh, thank you, ma'am. All right, perfect. I think um, Ms. Anita, Ms. Becky, how you doing there? Doing good? All right, perfect, thank you. All right, we have about 30 seconds left or so, and then we are going to move to the small, smaller jelly jar. Now this palette, color palette, oh, thanks, Ms. Kelly, I appreciate that, um, is this color palette for this particular design is much more limited than the last one. It is literally black, purple, and white. If you would like to add more colors to it, you surely can. And um, so we're going to be uh, using just the purple and white for the first step for this, I'll say, cactus silhouette. Ms. Barbara, I'll give you another 30 seconds or so. I know that you're using, uh, you may be using a smartphone there. Want to make sure that um, you, you're good to go. Now there have been times uh, when I have really fingered up my jars and got a good amount of oil on, or I just moisturized and then was touching my jars. And I noticed that the acrylic paint does not 
display correctly. I, I notice it starts to get kind of cracky on the glass surface. If that is the case, you may want to rinse it all off with some uh, soap and then start again. But uh, they're relatively clean and it really does not happen too often that you would have to do that. I just noticed for myself that um, occasionally uh, I've seen the, the paint crack a little bit and you know, I've just left it and I cooked it and I just went with it. But uh, if you've noticed that and it's real big cracks there, that just means that there's a good amount of oil on the surface. And most likely it, like I said, it's from your hands and you can just use either rubbing alcohol or some dish soap to uh, degrease the outside surface there. Okay, so this, this uh, next step here to work on our cactus silhouette painting is really easy. We're just putting purple band across the bottom, blending it with some light and another purple band at the top. That is it for right now. And so we're gonna start off with the purple. If you do not care for that purple that I mixed, you can add more red to it, more blue to it, uh, or use a whole different color. So I'm gonna just start off, and again, this is the large brush, large meaning the flat brush. I'm gonna stick my hand inside the jar, makes, makes it a little bit easier for me. And I'm gonna start off with the purple around the bottom. Now, good news here. <laughs> I, I, I was the guinea pig. I, I always get so stressed out when putting things that don't belong or aren't common in the oven. And so I decided to just paint across the bottom of my, my surface, my glass surface. Now I didn't paint like the whole bottom, but I did, I did get a little bit on the bottom and I just put it in the oven on a tray to see what would happen. In the worst case scenario, I would have some glass stuck on a tray forever. Well, good news, it did not happen. So you do not need to worry about your item, your artwork permanently affixed in your oven. I, I now know that and now you do too and you can feel safe and comfortable knowing that that will not happen. Okay, so I'm going up probably about mm, a half an inch or so around this glass jar here with the purple, just straight purple. Once I've got that purple in place, I'm gonna add the white. I'm not gonna clean the brush and I'm gonna overlap the purple by about an eighth of an inch or so because already I've got a good amount of purple on my brush. I don't need to, to pick up anymore. And so what will happen when you do this and already having the purple, it will make that white read as a very light purple. And when we come back for our next coat, we'll use more of a straight white, but this will allow us to have some variety I'm taking this white pretty much all the way to that lip of where the lid will go. And again, it's not pure white. It is, it's got all kinds of purple and I'm letting that those uh, streaks, I'm letting those streaks be because I don't want it to be perfectly smooth and I would really be beating myself up trying to get it to be perfectly smooth. Remember, this is just the first coat. So I took the white up just to that uh, base of that lip where the, when the lid goes on, that's where it would stop. And if you have some brush strokes in there, you, you want to get out. Remember, just real gentle pressure, just real light pressure. But this is the first coat. It doesn't really matter, but you know, it doesn't hurt to practice for the for the uh, second and third coat.
once you get to that lip of the jar, go ahead and continue the white on right over top of that lip. Once you take the white over top of that lip, I kept the brush dirty and now at the very top, paint the purple. And naturally it will blend with the white that is below it. We can make this purple a little more dramatic on the next coat if, if we want to. Once you are done with that, go ahead and clean your brush off. I'm gonna give uh, about three minutes on this step here um, in case y'all you're just getting started on the base. I wanna give you some time to get one full coat over the whole jelly jar. And while I do that, I want to review my um, my roster here. Um, hopefully uh, there's a few people here that I do not see and they may be uh, with some others. And so just go ahead and send me a message if that's the case, or you can shoot me an email if you cannot uh, send me a message through the Zoom here. I'm looking for Ms. Kat, uh, last name Harding, uh, Ms. Uh, Shirley, and Ms. Sue. See, I am also looking for um, Elysian. What a beautiful name that is. And that is uh, that Miss Elysian is in Prescott. My, uh, my Phoenix friends, Miss Sue and Miss Shirley, Miss Cat, I am, I am missing you right now. So if you are here with us, go ahead and send me a message. All right, got it, thank you. I got Miss Alice here checked off on the roster. All right, so we still have another minute left uh, for painting this uh, jelly jar with the cactus silhouettes. I'm just taking a quick look at my taller jelly jar here for uh, stars in the sky. And it looks like I am dry and ready to proceed forward, but uh, we're gonna give it, like I said, we've got another minute left on cactus silhouettes. So while we let this, uh, this layer uh, set up uh, well, I'd like to go over the materials in the kit. So I'm going to uh, switch my screen here so I can, uh, let's see, want to, Okay. All right, friends. So uh, if you're finishing up, that's fine. I just want to quickly, while we're letting uh, those of you who are still painting, continue to paint, and then also give a little bit more time for your jelly jar to dry its first step. And I'm going to go over the other materials in the kit so that we know what they are for. Okay, so obviously, the jelly jars, we've got that on, uh, under Pat. So um, with that, you had a whole bunch of these little, 
containers of fragrance oil and I had to put them in multiple uh, containers because I know some people may be sensitive to fragrance. And so I've got, you know, there's a total of six in each kit. Okay. And each one, obviously all three would go into one candle. Okay. So you can tell that there's two different colors. One is more yellow and one is more of a clear. So the three that are a yellow, they are all the same and they are vanilla. Vanilla always yellows. So unfortunately, there isn't any way around it. You can't have a perfectly clear uh, white candle when it comes to vanilla. It will always happen with a, a fragrance that is pure vanilla or a fragrance that has vanilla in it. So this yellow here is vanilla. Now, I know we're not making this decision right now, but all three of these fragrances go in the one candle. I can equate this to, though it may, you may think, oh, that's a lot of fragrance. I, I really don't like strong candles. You can equate all three of these to half of the scent that you would find in a Bath and Body Works candle. So hopefully that will help you identify how much fragrance you would like to add. All three of these go in one candle and that is only half of the strength in a regular Bath and Body Works candle, okay? If, you're, if you may not be familiar with them, most people are. It is a very, very strongly scented candle. So three is only half, okay. So the yellow is the vanilla. And this clear here is called cactus flower. I, I don't know if it really does smell like cactus flower. That is the name from the company. I guess I need to be smelling some cactus flowers in the near future to confirm. Uh, so the clear is cactus flower. And the same goes for the fragrance strength. All three combined together. Uh, though cactus flower is a, is quite fragrant, uh, fragrance is very strong fragrance. Um, it is still half of the fragrance that is used in the Bath and Body Works candles. Okay. So when we do make our candles, you can decide, and you don't have to worry about it right now, whether you want no scent at all, maybe one. I definitely recommend adding all three though it may seem strong initially, when you burn the candle, the fragrance is very low. Okay, we have our uh, rubbing alcohol. Now this rubbing alcohol is 91%. That 91% is the best for cleaning wax and any uh, fragrance or candle activities. I would use 91% because it is the strongest and it uh, cuts uh, any of the wax or the oils. So 91. Okay. Um, I usually put in a spray bottle so it doesn't take very much. It's just like a little, little dab here and there. So this will be plenty. I, I added more in case you have a spill or an accident. Other items in the kit are the bags of soy wax each bag, one bag per candle. So they are already pre-measured for you. I included uh, two sets of gloves in each kit. So I think there's a medium and a large. Um, so depending on what your comfort level is. And then I do have a small uh, table cover here to protect from any of the wax. I do recommend also using uh, paper or a paper towel cover for your surface when we do the candles also just to be on the safe side. But, you know, this is a, a free covering that you can use as you wish. If you don't want to use it for the candles, you can use it possibly for a painting or another art activity. In another baggie, we have our wicks, stir sticks, uh, half a pen, well, is it half? Maybe it's a quarter of a pen. But this tool is awesome because this allows us to put our wick in perfectly centered here. 
into our container. So even after this activity, this is a, a great tool to use if you want to make candles in the future. You have a couple wick stickers. Uh, these, uh, these stickers here go on the bottom of the wicks to affix to the bottom of the jar. You have some safety stickers, always important if you're giving this uh, candle as a gift, um, but then it doesn't hurt to read also to know uh, safety procedures for burning candles. I know we burn candles all the time, but there's a lot of things that we do that are actually wrong. And I will talk about that to maximize your candles uh, next class. We have a couple of these clothespins here. They actually hold the wick in place while it is while the candle is curing. Okay, so those are all the tools that are in the kit. We will paint another coat on and then we will talk about the tools that you will need for the next class. All right. I'm gonna switch my camera here. All right, Miss Shelley, am I am I uh, nice and big right here? No, okay, good to know. Thank you. All right, my all right, I'm good now. Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the uh, stars in the sky jelly jar. We've got one coat of paint over the whole thing. Next, what we're gonna do is still using the flat brush, we're going to do the same process over again, but this time we're gonna be a little bit more blending with our layers. So we're still going to add a little bit of white at the bottom. We don't need a complete coverage because black is gonna go there, but we're gonna add a little bit of white, then kind of blend that in with some of that yellow, blend that in with the red and proceed on. So I'm gonna start off with just a little bit of white. I, I don't need nearly as much white for this because like I said, the black is at the base. So just real quick, I'm just gonna do a just thin little tap tap here of the white and then allows me to have some areas of yellow that are lighter. So I've got that white in place and you can see I did not do full coverage at all. I just did a little bit here and there and I'm going to do the yellow over top of that. Very light brush strokes here. And if I want some uh, a lot of variety in my yellow, I can add more white into that. Just remember when you do add the red though, that will make more of a pink tone. So very light pressure with brushing this on. And if you want, yeah, sure, why not? I'll add a little bit of white here and there. It's nice to add that white in just to break it up because you know our skies are not perfectly one color band. There's variation in that. So I've got the yellow in place and now I'm going to pick up some red. I'm keeping my brush dirty. And what I'm going to do is add the red and then off to the side, I'm gonna mix up a little bit of an orange to put over top of that. Mostly yellow, just a tiny bit of red, just because I don't wanna disturb the paint that I have already on the jar. So I mixed up my orange and where I added the red, I just went right over top of that with that orange tone. And then overlap just a little bit of that yellow from the layer below. And 
and then you kind of start to, to blend. So you can choose, am I gonna blend this into a nice smooth finish or do I like some of that variety? It kind of reads a little bit as uh, some of the clouds in the uh, sky as the sun is setting. So I, I do pick up a little bit more yellow in some spots if need be. A little bit of red in some other spots. I'm working my way up the red as I as I go around and around. And obviously, I want I want it to go darker as I work my way up to more of the red. There we go. So I'm I'm all the way to the end of my red from the first layer. And I'm just gonna go around that, that layer of red to reinforce that division of the red and blue. You can work your way around, kind of smoothing out some of those uh, those lines, blending some of that color if you'd like. So once I get that red right up where the seam of the red and blue meet, I'm actually gonna clean my brush off and mix a little bit of black into the red. A little bit of black in, I'm, act, I'm gonna mix it on my uh, palette. Mostly red, tiny bit of black. It's gonna read of a, like a dark, real dark red. And that's my transition right over top of the blue. Overlapping just a little bit of that red. I'm going right to that ridge of where the lid, the lid would stop with this mixture of the red and black together. Mostly red, just a little bit of black because that black is intense. If you're uh, well concerned about that transition of the red to the darker red where you had the black. You can add a little bit more of the straight red over top of that while it's still wet and blend that right on top of the jar there, right on top of that red you already put there over that seam of the black and red mixed together and the straight red. All right. So from there, I'm just gonna add some straight black, keeping my brush dirty. There we go. 
And then once you are done with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, clean the brush off and let this set up. So I'll give you uh, about two minutes to finish this up here. Uh, and then we'll move to the cactus silhouette small jelly jar. We'll put another layer on that. Got about another minute left on this uh, step here, and then we'll move to that smaller jelly jar. All right, friends, so uh, we're pretty much going to do the same thing over again that we already did on the small jelly jar with the cactus silhouette. Uh, we just want to smooth out some of our transition. And also, if we want more variety, such as clouds, or maybe we want to change where the section of the lighter and the darker are, we can adjust that at this point. I'm not putting the black on like on the completed jar quite yet. So again, this step is starting off with the straight purple. Using that flat brush. Then I went up about a half an inch and then I'm going to pick up some white and I'm going to blend uh, that together. And like I said, at this point, you could you could really make it a little bit more fanciful. A little more blending. You want to put a little bit of wave in your brush stroke to kind of mimic more of an organic feel to the sky. Work that white all the way up to that ridge where the lid would stop if the lid was on the jelly jar. You can go back and pick up more of that purple tone if you wanted. Once you get to that ridge, you can uh, go over top with a little bit of white and then it would be the straight purple. You want the top to be a little uh, dark, kind of to mimic the bottom. Nice thing about painting at this point is that you really don't have to worry about having any type of skill or ability. Just don't paint all over your hands, I guess, since you're rotating the glass. <laughs> now, if you want, take some of that purple down past the ridge.
All right, so I'll give you about three minutes on this step here that allows you uh, to finish up anything uh, on this jelly jar. We are still gonna put another layer on the stars in the sky jelly jar. So don't, um, you know, just let that set up from whatever you did in the past and we're gonna put another layer on it. But this is pretty much it for the a cactus silhouette jelly jar. So if there is any other blending or something that you would like to do, now would be the time to do it because our next step for this particular jelly jar is to add the cactus. So I'm gonna set this down because I'm, I'm feeling pretty good with it. If uh, you have another two and a half minutes to do anything else that you would like to do to it, um, we really do wanna have this set up before we start adding the cactus because we want that, that cactus to be um, nice crisp black so it stands out uh, from this background. Once you're done, you can clean your brush. Just taking a look at my uh, larger jelly jar to see how things are drying up. It is still a little damp, so I'm going to uh, let this be. And in about two minutes, I will talk about those supplies that you will need to have available and ready for the next class. We have about a minute and a half left on painting the jelly jars and then I will, um, we're going to come back obviously, we just need to let this coat set up and we're going to talk about the materials that you will need for the next class. If you would like to take a quick break or change out your water, I'll give you another two minutes or so for that. We will come back and let's see, it's right now my clock says it's 6.59, so we'll come back at 7.02. So that gives you a little bit of time if you need to use the restroom or change out your water or finish up anything on your jelly jars, you can do that at this time. After I go over the details for the materials that you will need for the next class, I will go over what the next steps are for the rest of the painting. And then we will see how dry we are and uh, if we can continue on or if we have to wait a few more minutes. If your paintings are really wet, you can dry your jelly jars a little bit more depending on how wet it is uh, with a blow dryer or a fan. That's just temporarily so that you can move on to the next step. Also, if things are not drying at all for you, you can just let it be, watch the rest of the session, and then come back a little bit later uh, when we have the recording posted for you to view at your leisure. have about another minute and a half and then I will tell you about the materials that you are to provide for the next class.
So I do on this sheet here that I provide in the kit, have a list of the materials that are in the kit and then a list of materials that you provide. Obviously a covered workspace is ideal and that is because you, depending on what your workspace is like, you may have a really nice refined table that you don't wanna get supplies on, but it's your only workspace. Um, so you want to protect it, of course. I use uh, either paper that I have from a roll or in fact, right now the, the workspace I have is actually the backside of canvas packs. So, but I want to keep it white. So I use the backside. The other side is the advertisement for the canvas. And so that is my covering. But for the next class, you're going to want to make sure that you have plenty of table covering because depending on what your surface is, you, you will not want to get the wax on your table or the 91% uh, alcohol or the fragrance oil. All of these items can potentially cause damage to your workspace. So that is why I provide you with some uh, table cover, but then also I recommend maybe a coating of paper towels or a coating of paper or even like a paper placemat, whatever you have will work just fine. Uh, I have a cooking thermometer here. You don't need anything real big, uh, but a cooking thermometer uh, needs to be at least anywhere from 60 degrees to 220 degrees. That would be your range. If you have, if it goes higher than that, that's great. I don't know what you'd be cooking that would go higher than that, but that's cool anyway. So just a cooking thermometer. And uh, then you would need a microwave safe dish and something safe to melt wax. I use this pitcher. It is plastic and has a handle. I have also used my Pyrex dish before in my microwave and I found that that does get very hot to touch with my hand. And so this plastic pitcher works great for me. I, I will still use a Pyrex if I don't have this plastic pitcher, but just know that it, it will be a little bit more on the sensitive side because of how hot it gets, believe it or not. Um, all of the materials that we use are uh, safe. I would not recommend eating it, but the soy wax by itself is safe to consume or to get on your skin. The fragrance oil, uh, on the other hand, when it is condensed is not safe, but when it is mixed in with the wax, it is safe. It is cosmetic grade fragrance oil. So later on, if you want to try, you could rub it a little bit on your skin, see how it works out. Some people use it as a, a nice, warm, soothing uh, foot rub before they go to bed. Different story. Okay, back to our materials. So pitcher, it doesn't even have to be a pitcher, to be honest with you. It could be a bowl, but something that is easy to handle at least can hold comfortably two cups worth because though our wax that we're putting in here is not two cups. We're going to want to stir it up real good and we don't want any of that to splash out onto the sides of our workspace. So that's why I say two cups work. Okay. So next is a microwave. I use my microwave at my home. I always put paper towels down at the base of the micro, like on the glass turntable inside the microwave just to protect it because I hate cleaning. And so whatever I can do not to have to clean is what I like to do. So I just put paper towel down on the microwave. Um, everyone's microwave is different. And so we're going to have to be a little bit more understanding when we do this process next week that I may say to everyone, okay, we're gonna cook our, our wax in our container in the microwave for two minutes. Then we're gonna check the temperature. Well, Becky may have, uh, her may, she may be at 160 and you know Shelly may be at 100. So we're gonna have to be mindful that everyone's microwaves is a little bit different. And I'll talk about uh, the next class at what temperatures we want to be at. And we just have to be mindful that if we idle high and we'll find out when we even do a, a minute test to see where we're at, we'll find out if our microwave is like a super high powered microwave or maybe if it's um, a little bit on the lower setting. It will, your candles will turn out just fine if you happen to have a, a lower wattage microwave, no problem. Okay, so paper towels. Obviously paper towels are great, but paper towels will allow us when we make the two different candles to clean out 
our container so that we don't taint the one fragrance with the other. Now at this point, vanilla and cactus flower are I would say they're comparable, so it doesn't really matter if you get a little bit of the, of the fragrance from one into the other. In fact, you may want to mix them, the two together, and get a nice fragrance. But uh, to clean it out, we use the alcohol and a paper towel. You can save those paper towels if you do any type of uh, light fires, if you have a fireplace or a fire pit, you can save those paper towels, let them drop, and then throw it in for a nice fragrance uh, at your fire pit. Obviously, we're, we're going to need some scissors. We'll need a pen and scrap paper because you're going to want to write down which candle is which fragrance. Sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, I know, I'll remember that. But then when you got a lot of stuff other going on, you are going to want to write down which one is which. Obviously, we're going to need um, a clock or a timer because when, though you have may have one on your microwave, you are going to want to stir your company, your mixture for a, a designated amount of time. And that makes sure that chemically everything binds well together. And so you're going to be responsible for having to keep uh, time. I usually use my phone or my oven has a clock on it. And so whatever time it is, I just add two minutes onto that. And that's a designated time for me. Um, and then a blow dryer. So the blow dryer is not essential for the next class, but after the class, you may need a blow dryer. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, but a basic blow dryer will be sufficient. Okay, so I've gone over all the materials that you will need for the next class. Hopefully you have everything. If not, borrow it. I know my sister did not, when we uh, did the candle making, she did not have a cooking thermometer. Uh, so she borrowed one from her friend and then she ended up purchasing one. Um, they are not too expensive. I think I got mine at Walmart pretty cheap. Um, in fact, I have two. So those are all the supplies. If you have any questions about uh, alternative supplies, you can shoot me an email. Uh, if you have any questions about supplies, please shoot, shoot me a comment here because uh, if you have a question, I'm sure that someone else has a similar question. Um, or maybe they're maybe wondering, but they don't want to ask. So feel free to ask any questions you have there in the comments. Okay, let's get back to painting. So I'm going to continue to use this uh, large flat brush and I'm going to change over my screen here. All right, so Michelle, am I am I big? Nope. Okay, thank you for letting me know. All right, Michelle, we're doing good. All right, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so the next step here. Uh, we're going to do uh, stars in the sky jelly jar. We've got to put some beautiful texture in the upper portion of our jar here. And I want to show you on a flat surface first because I want you to get a good understanding of what we need to do to create this look here at the top. And though, you know, oh, it's so pretty, but it's just so hard to see on the jar. So that's why I have the canvas here. Okay. So to start off with, I use a uh, straight black and I dab the black randomly throughout, but I mix up two colors, okay? I mix a medium blue, which, okay, this is white, this is kind of a light green, this is blue, and this is purple. So let's see, we got some more blue here. My blue is not the straight blue. It needs a little bit of white to lighten it up. So just a tiny, tiny bit of white in there. And then I need, if you have a green, then use a green and white. But if not, pick up a little bit of yellow and make yourself a green tone. So I have a light green and I have a medium blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap 
this blue and green at this top section of my painting. And I'm going to use that flat brush and just kind of tap it in place here. So whatever I've got on here, I mean, this is literally, this is it. So I tap that around, okay, kind of randomly. So I'll do a little bit of the light color, a little bit of the dark color, and I'm rotating, I'll do a slow motion here. And literally I'm, I'm kind of like turning my, my hand just a little bit. And if you look at this part, you can, so you can see my hand, my, my fingers are, are rotating the brush, but then at the other end, my brush is moving. So it's rotating. And when I do that, I get different brush strokes. And so this, so that's my fast motion. So my slow motion, but then my fast, um, but I'm still rotating my brush at the same time as I do this. So I get a little bit of the darker blue and a, that lighter green tone. And then I need to go back with some black and just kind of break that up because that's a lot going on up there. And I don't need all that active sky to take away from my stars. So I'll just grab some black and I'll do the same thing and I'll break up some of those those bigger sections of color. And so by doing that black in there, I can break it up. Now I have at times, you can try this if you want. I have at times, instead of doing this technique, and I'm telling you, just in case you wanna try something different, instead of using that brush, I will actually ball up one of my used paper towels and I will just ball it up and then I will dip just, just a little section of it in the paint here. And then I'll come back with this and, and I'm rotate, I can rotate my wrist and I get a bigger coverage of section here by rotating my wrist and the, and the similar effect. Because sometimes I, I just physically have a hard time rotating for those little tiny brush marks. So a paper towel, you can see, will help do that same effect um, with less movement on my wrist and my hands. So I'm going to now demonstrate that on the jar itself, okay? So I wanted to show you on a flat surface so that you can see what, ideally what we would like to do. Okay, so that is that. All right, so here's my jar. And remember, I'm gonna clean this off. So, so we're starting from the beginning. I've got, I've got uh, a lighter green tone. So if you have green, just add a little bit of white to it. Uh, if you don't, you can mix a little bit of yellow and blue together. So I have a lighter green tone. And then I took the straight uh, blue and I added just a little bit of white, just so little, but because I really want to see that richness of that blue, like a royal blue. I, I don't want it to be too dark. I just, I want to lighten up a little bit. So to start off with, I'm going to do just a little bit of black. So I'm just pulling some, some black aside here. And I'm only at the top inch, top inch only of my jelly jar. That is the very top. And then mm, about a quarter of an inch below that little tiny lip, just a quarter of an inch. And I'm rotating my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of black. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do kind of work my way around. I'm gonna do this all at the same time. So just a little bit of black here and there. I'm not doing full coverage, just a little bit of black. And this black is really for after I put those other colors on, it's gonna kind of just help blend it and soften uh, those colors and also make them a little less vibrant. Though we like the brightness of the colors, we don't need them just, we need them to blend a little bit from the uh, night sky there. All right. So I've got, I've done that around the top inch, just a couple little tap tap of the black. I'm gonna um, take the brush off. And I'm now going to go to that lighter tone. 
lighter tone it's just it's a green and white mixed together if you have green then then use that i to be honest with you, i can't remember if i added green into that into your uh, paint there but if i did then that is a gorgeous color um, but if not then the yellow and the blue uh, mixed together is also a great resolution it kind of gives like a um, kind of a turquoisey sagey green kind of color and so remember we're doing the same thing rotating just kind of random taps there. Now at this point, I'm holding my jar uh, so that I can see the full, full jar and that the top is literally at the top and I'm kind of rotating with my fingers at the top of the jar and at the bottom at the base. And so I can kind of rotate in that manner. That allows me to rotate a little bit faster than I was earlier. And I need to be a little bit faster for this particular step. If you prefer the other way of holding the jelly jar, like your hand inside, just be prepared. You may get a couple blobs of paint on yourself, but no problem because it is acrylic and easily cleaned with soap and water. Well, maybe a little bit of elbow grease. Okay, so I've got my light section in here. And so now I'm gonna pick up that, that blue that I add just a little bit of white to. And I'm gonna just tap that it's still just the top inch and I'm, I'm not, it's not full coverage. We're, we still wanna see that black coming through. We wanna see some of the, the red coming through. All right, there we go. And now I am ready to break it up with a little bit of black. So what I'll probably do, I will clean my brush off here and I will get straight black and I'll try that. And then if I wanna go to the paper towel method, I can do so. And I like, I just prefer the paper towel method because it's quicker, but I also like the method of using the paintbrush and tapping because I can be a little bit more refined. And if there's a, a, an area I need to work a little bit more, I can just focus right on that one area with the brush alone. So I'll do the straight black paint here and the flat brush and I'll just kind of break up some of those uh, blue, light blue blobs. Okay, well, all right, that works nicely, but now I'm going to try that paper towel method. And there, it's personal preference with this particular step here. I always like to, to give different options because everyone has um, a different taste or their sensibilities a little different. And so one technique may work better for someone than someone else. Rotate my paper towel a little bit here. Go. All right, I feel pretty good about uh, what I've got on this particular this particular layer. If if you felt like maybe that technique didn't work well for you, maybe it was too much black, you can go back in with a little bit of, little bit of blue. Like I said, you know, like it's really nice for a refined, smaller detail. If there's like a big blob and you want to break it up. You know, just like a big dark area. I just want it to have a little bit more light. Now I find I might have put a little too much in a light in one section, so I'll go back over and break it up. All right, so I feel really good about this jar here. I'm going to give you um, another 
another two minutes or so on this. I'll set that off the side. Sorry about that. Right. Once you're done with that step, go ahead and clean off your brush. I'm going to let that set up. We may want to go back in and touch it up a little bit later, but you know, you can only put so much paint on at one time. So we definitely want to let that set just a little bit longer before we touch it again. Once you're done with that, um, we got one more minute left. I'm going to um, start back with our cactus silhouette. Uh, jar and we will paint some cactus silhouettes. That is with straight black paint and the fine detail brush. I will also use the large flat brush for the black at the base of the jelly jar. So go ahead and clean your brush and we'll proceed forward to the uh, next uh, jelly jar, which is the cactus silhouette. I'm trying to I have some cactus silhouettes that I, I uh, saved, but unfortunately it's not sharing. Uh, if you have a hard time with identifying uh, what a cactus silhouette is, I recommend to uh, do a quick Google search for uh, literally cactus silhouette. And, uh, you, and I will, in the email I send out with the link, I will include some photos of uh, cactus silhouettes that I refer to. All right. So let me make sure everyone can see everything. All right. So, um, Miss Shelley, I am still still big screen here. All right, perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So there's a variety of cactus that you can put on. Uh, and it, it is really personal preference. Um, as you can see here, I've got the the tall swarrow cactus. Um, oh, there's so many different names for all these cactus because there's this one has a different name and this one has a different name. I know, do know that one is a, a prickly pear. Oh, it's a very slender one. There's some other parts that would be added onto there. So uh, there are so many different types of uh, cactus and also desert plants that you can add in this. I don't want you to feel like you could only do this type of cactus. So uh, I will be sending some image, imagery out for you to review, but then also you can do a quick uh, Google search on cactus silhouette. So just know that it, all the cactus are not the same. There are many different types of cactus and they look, some of them look similar, but uh, are not. 
and uh, that will give you some nice variety. You can see some are very tall, some are fat and short. Uh, so uh, we're going to fill up our midsection here of our small jelly jar here with cactus. Before we do that, let's go ahead and put the base of black on the jelly jar. So I'm using the uh, flat brush and I'm going to just paint a band of black around the bottom. I don't want to cover up all of the purple I have on there. So I'm, I'm going to be choosy as to how much black I put on. In fact, because I am in the desert, desert has some variety, I'm going to not make the black band perfectly around the jelly jar. It's going to be uh, kind of wavy. I apologize to all of you out there who are horticultural knowledgeable type of people. I am not, I appreciate from a distance. I am not a native Arizonan. And even some natives don't know all of the, the cactus and uh, desert plants out there. So I just put a little hill in a couple spots while I'm working my way around with the black. My my friend Marge is apparently a Arizona certified master gardener. I don't really know what that entails. I have known her for several years and she is now just telling me that she is this dignified person in the state of Arizona. I don't know what it means, but it sounds pretty prestigious and knowledgeable uh, for gardening in Arizona. She is literally a go-to person for gardening, which is impressive considering I had a great green thumb on the East Coast, grew all my vegetables from seeds starting out right after Christmas, but now I cannot keep anything alive and all of my greenery is plastic. All right, so. Got the black around the base there, and I'm going to just stick the flat brush in the cup of water and then go to that fine detail brush. So, like I said, there's all different types of cactus. I'm going to start off here with a tall cactus using the fine detail brush. And I like to hold the jar uh, at a distance. I'm using my pinky to, to kind of stabilize the jar in my hand, my left hand. So I've got my pinky touching the table and the jar elevated from, from that point. And, and I will also uh, use my pinky on my right hand, and I'm right-handed, to uh, help stabilize my hand. You could also, if that none of that worked for you, you can place that one side. And just know that later on, you will have to repaint a little bit of that black, but no big deal. So I'm going to go ahead. It doesn't really matter where you start, whether it's on one side, another side, an edge. Okay. I'm going to start somewhere, right? So we got a line. So I'm going to just paint in some cactus here. At least for one of them, think of a pitchfork. And some of those arms are in uh, the back, so you can't really see where they come from.
the prickly pear is kind of a neat, it's kind of a, some small, I got a little extra hair here I need to get off. It is um, some smaller ovals. They're all connected together. And, and there really is not any rhyme or reason for how they're connected together. They get a little bit larger at the base. And you can have that uh, cactus. It's just a single brush stroke. You've got the uh, Joshua trees in there. And if there's a particular desert plant that you would like that you do not see, you can always, like I said, Google search that. I always like to see what people come up with. So you can put as a little or as many as you'd like. Um, you can space them out. You can uh, put them very close together. Well, this was a little bit of a mistake I was looking elsewhere, but you know, I'm going with it. There you go. Uh, they have, uh, there's some you know, tumbleweeds and some grasses. So I'll give you uh, another um, four minutes or so to work on this here. And then we'll go back to our uh, stars in the sky painting.
another uh, minute or so to work on that. You can always come back after the class and add more um, once you do some research on, as to uh, some of your favorite uh, cactus silhouettes. All right, we're going to move on uh, back to uh, move back to the stars in the sky. All right. So uh, as I look around this uh, particular jelly jar, if I see maybe some texture that I don't care for very much or I want to blend away, I am. I can use the black red combo to kind of smooth that out a little bit of uh, black red or maybe I'm like oh I really don't feel comfortable touching that I'm just going to leave it as is you can do that too but there might be a couple when you use the paper towel a couple spots that maybe got down uh, lower uh, onto your uh, sky color that maybe you just don't don't want to see so noticeably and to soften that up you can use some of that red black color to kind of break that up a little bit you can tap it you can do a few little lines uh, you can add a little bit of red not too much we want to keep it relatively dry but if there's like a few little sections there that you're like oh i kind of wish there wasn't as much of that there or, oh i didn't i didn't realize it got so far down So I just kind of looked around and uh, if I saw maybe some black that was down in my red uh, by accident, I just kind of blended that away with some of the black red. And, you know, if you need to pick up some straight red there to, to help disguise some, uh, some of the dark, any of a darker spot or something, you can do that too. All right, so I'm going to now at this point uh, add a little bit of 
straight black across the bottom is very similar to painting the other jar. Obviously, I'm more, kind of a, a little bit of a, a hill uh, in some areas. Uh, it's about mm, a quarter of an inch or so, no more than a half of an inch. So I'll set, set my jar down here while I let uh, that black kind of set up a bit and clean that flat brush off. Shortly, I'm going to go into the stars in the sky, but since I just did a couple uh, paint uh, touches on the top section, I don't want uh, to do that quite yet. So I'm going to let it set up a bit and I'm going to do a quick demonstration on my canvas of what what those uh, stars look like because again it's hard to see on that rounded uh, rounded jar and so I want to make sure that you know exactly what things look like So those stars are put on with straight white paint and the fine detail brush. You can actually use the flat brush for a real thin line and I will demonstrate that momentarily. So I'll give you one more minute here to uh, finish up the black at the bottom of that jelly jar. And again, we're gonna uh, let that paint set up at the top portion before we add the white. All right, friends, so I'm going to use that fine detail brush and the flat brush uh, at the same time, well, not really at the same time, but uh, to for this step here of putting the stars in the sky. To start off with, I'm going to use the fine detail brush and I'm going to put a couple dots in place and the whole purpose of the dots are to help me know where my hearts will be. So it doesn't really matter what side of the jelly jar. So for right now, I'm just doing the demonstration on my flat surface here so that you can see what it looks like. I wanna keep the majority of the design in that upper section. It can come down a little bit into the red, but I wanna keep it in the upper section, but at the same time, underneath the lip on that, uh, that lip where the lid would stop at on the jar. So I'm gonna put, uh, a couple dots here and I'm going to see if I can make them pretty bold so that you can see. Now these are going to be a little bit on the bigger side. Hopefully you can see uh, there. Let me see if I'm closer. Okay. All right. So one dot there and I'm kind of doing like a connect the dots thing for uh, my heart. Uh, so obviously I want the two points at the top portion of the heart, then off the side where that heart kind of tapers uh, to round the sides. And then I've got a bottom point here. And maybe a connector in between. Okay, so I've got one heart in place. And to help me know 
where the heart is. I'm going to actually use the flat brush flat, after I get it wet, flatten it with my fingers and then uh, dip it in the white paint. And I like the flat brush for this step, but you can use whichever brush you prefer um, to connect. It's kind of a suggested connection. There we go. So you can see I can get a real nice thin line using the, the flat brush. And I, I did actually take my fingers and after I got the white paint on it, I shaped it to keep it extra flat. Okay, so now you can see it looks more like a heart. And then I can go in, clean my brush off. I can reshape that detail brush so it's real pointy. And I can go back in with my white paint and I can, a couple of the stars, I can you know, really make them, make them vibrant and have um, some twinkle to them. A couple little lines going off of them. Okay, so that's one heart. So you don't really have to worry about those twinkly lines, but I just kind of wanted to put that in there so you could see that the development of the heart. So now the goal here is to have a similar heart next to it, but that heart actually uses one of the same stars to connect uh, to make its heart shape. So that is the furthest point on the other, on the other uh, heart. And I try to make them just a little bit different in size. So maybe this one might be fatter or might be thinner, um, maybe not as round. So when I do my connect the dots, there is a little bit more variety here in this particular heart. And so it doesn't look exactly the same. Okay, so I've got my uh, dots in place and now I'm going to put a few lines using my flat brush. So you can see that heart's a little bit, a little bit smaller, uh, but yet it still does connect and touch to one of the dots from the other heart. And then of course, put those, you know, some more twinkly lines coming from, not all of them, but maybe just a couple. And then if you want, uh, that's pretty much it for the hearts, but if you wanted to do maybe um, a shooting star here and there. Do something like that. And, you know, do that around the jar itself uh, would be a nice addition. And then, you know, take it an, an, another step further and maybe put another couple other white dots here and there to represent stars. That is not on the original jelly jar, but why not? So now I'm going to do the demonstration on the jar itself. So I will look at my jar and see, mm, do I have an ugly side, do I have a pretty side? Doesn't really matter which one I choose. Maybe there's a little blob or something I wanna cover up at the top portion of the jar, I can do that. So again, I'm gonna start off with just doing those dots. I'm keeping those dots below that lip of the jelly jar, but then again, I'm not going into the yellow. I can go into the red, but not the yellow because 
fairy, you don't see all those stars in the sky uh, as they get closer to, uh, to us in uh, the sunset or into the atmosphere. Okay, so I'll start shaping out my heart here. So it is a uh, one, two, three, four, about six or so dots. And it's really however many dots you want to use to connect to make this heart. Okay. Once you get the dots in place, I, I, I easily get distracted. So I need to put the, those lines in right now. Right, so there's one. So I'll connect on the other, I'll do the one on the other side here. I'm gonna go on the opposite side here. I'll use the, put the dots in place. And then I'll put my lines. And they don't all have to touch, kind of like I said, it's a suggested line. Those, um, you know, you can have some additional stars that maybe overlap a little bit more. Let's see, I wanna make this really like overlap here. So I'll just add, I added another little dot and I'll do another little, little connector line here. And a couple stars. And while I'm at it, I'll add a couple dots for stars kind of around the top. You don't have to. Wait. Maybe you messed up. You know, I got a weirdo star thing going on here. I'll take um, let's take a little bit of 
red black color. Let's see if I can clean that up a little bit and then I can come back after it is set up and they can, here we go. I can go ahead and I can put some some other uh, stars or highlights back in that spot there after it sets up. Put a couple dots over on the back side. You can do the same thing, the same design on the back side if you'd like. Um, or instead of hearts, maybe there might be a zodiac sign or a constellation or something that you would like to put in there. You're more than welcome to put whatever you'd like. Or sometimes, you know, when I look at stars, I, I think they make up some some other random shape or of, of some design. And, uh, you know, maybe you want to make up, put a couple, connect the dots and, and put some fun uh, imagery in your night sky there. So I'll let you finish that up, friends. Um, while you are, are still working on that, I'll share with you just a little bit of information for our next class. We'll end um, more information about this class here. So if you are con uh, confused uh, or you have some questions about what happened during the class and you don't really understand, you wish you could see a step over again, uh, you can watch this view or recording a little bit later uh, on YouTube. I will be sending out another email that has the link to this session and then additional details about what your homework will be because we do need to fuse the acrylic paint onto the glass and we do that by baking in the oven but we are not going to do that tonight friends we're going to let that set up and dry and we have almost a whole week to do this next step of baking that acrylic paint onto the glass i will send all those instructions in an email if you do not check your email i will tell you quickly you put your glass jars into the oven, preheat at 350. Once it reaches temperature, you let it cook for 30 minutes at 350. You turn the oven off and you let the glass jars just sit there and slowly and naturally cool off. If you were to open the oven and take the jars out while they are still hot, they could potentially crack and break. And so I would hate for that to happen after you spend all this time painting those beautiful designs on the glass jars. You're gonna to wanna to do this step before our next class, which is next Tuesday, and where we make the candles in the jars. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the section here. Uh, but that's all I have for you this evening. Uh, if you have any other questions, you could also shoot me an email and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. If you have any paint left over, feel free to paint this or any other design on any other glass containers that you have. And you can also bake that in with the other, uh, with these glass jars that you've just painted. I would recommend you giving at least 24 hours before baking the jar so that the acrylic paint has plenty of time to dry. Slow is the way to go for this particular process here because I, I too many times I have been in a hurry and I have wet acrylic paint. And I'm like, oh, I gotta teach a class. I need an example. I need it to be done. And I stuck it in the oven, turned it on. I have ping, ping. And that was the glass breaking because the paint was still wet. So we don't want that to happen to you. So we're gonna wait at least 24 hours before we do the next step, but I have not given you the instructions written uh, unless you watch the recording prior to that. You may not know what the next step is. I will send that to you in an email within the next 24 hours. In addition to the link of this video, which we are recording right now. All right, friends, that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for spending the evening with me. I hope you had a good time. It was relaxing. You learned something new. And feel free, if you would like to add more detail to your paintings, just know, let each layer dry in between. 
If you make a mistake, you can cover it up with some paint, let that dry, and then add a little bit more to it. Um, you can do a Google search on uh, some cactus silhouettes. Maybe if you would like to know more about the uh, ash, uh, astrology or any type of uh, star, um, different things going up in the night sky, you can Google search that also and include that in your painting of your glass jar. All right, friends, thank you so much. I will be sending out information to you later. Have a fantastic evening. Uh, be safe, be well, and be creative. Until next time I see you.